All right, so it should get started in just a second. Okay. It says your meeting is now streaming. I feel like I say that every single time. Yep, I can see us. Oh, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, it's streaming in the group now. Excellent. Welcome to our Tuesday lunch break. Today, we have the uh, wonderful honor of chatting with Dr. Vanashri. She is an Ayurvedic doctor, and I know Vanashri from working with her in the Minnesota Ayurveda Association. So we're both part of this uh, association. Uh, Dr. Vanashri now is the president and she's so passionate about Ayurveda. And I wanted to bring her on um, for a couple of reasons. One, not only her passion, but you know, she has a certain level of dedication to the art of um, Ayurveda that I think that it can be kind of hard to come by. A lot of us get super excited about the new fad or the new diet or the new whatever. And then you become kind of like you research the heck out of it and you start doing it. And then like it peters out um, and you're kind of like, well, that, you know, part of that worked, part of it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And, and, a, and Vanashri has been so steeped in this. Another thing that's so cool about her background is one, she has like a four year, it's four year or five year degree. Four, four year. Four, four year no, no, no. Oh, the degree is like yeah. five and a half years. Yeah, five yeah. and a half years, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like a big deal. Like a lot of us in the US are taking certification courses in Ayurveda. It's a very different thing. And in, in India, where Dr. Vanashri is from, mm -hmm. Ayurveda is this huge, vast education system where it's not just about diet okay so we're going to be probably talking a little bit about that today but it's you know talking about how to to detox your organs there are um you know there's like acupuncture it's not called that but there's lots of different ways yes and pharmacology and so it's not just this little tiny thing that we're we're talking kind of about this narrow thing but yep. if what i want you to understand is that Dr. Vanashri has a huge, vast understanding of this healing art compared to a lot of us here in the US. And I'm including myself in that. I've done a lot of education. I've done a certification. It is not to the level that right. Vanashri has. And that's why I wanted to introduce you to her today. The other thing that's just so cool is that her exposure to people and seeing the doshas live and she'll explain what a dosha is seeing them live in a person she has sat down and seen like hundreds of people a day to do pulse diagnosis okay this is not like for the faint of heart this is like for somebody who's extremely passionate saying i can feel like at a very energetic level this is where you're at whereas a lot of us who are using our diagnostic tools, our tools come in the form of charts and um, checklists and just kind of a, I, I'm gonna say it's a little basic. That doesn't mean it's not helpful. No. But but Dr. Vanashri has just such a bigger, vaster tool set accessible. So what I wanna tell you is that what we're gonna talk about, I hope you're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, it's very common sense. And I told her we were going to talk about this because it's really, I think this is the, the exciting part about any healing art is that like there's a, there's a knowing. Yeah. It feels like you get it. There's the common sense about it. We have these elements. We have the doshas. So. And, and I was talking about with homeopathy when I got started, it totally made sense, mm -hmm. common sense. And then I had to go, I took a four-year program and I had to rewire my brain because there was so yeah. much to truly understand. And the same yeah. is true about Ayurveda. So what I want you to understand is scratching the surface on your own is so helpful, but getting a real teacher practitioner who really understands this art can be life transforming. So I hope you're as excited to talk to Dr. Vanashri as I am. So will you go ahead and do a little introduction about you? And then I'm, like I said, I'm so excited for you to tell them like, why Ayurveda? Yes, 
yeah absolutely well thank you mary for hosting me i really appreciate it i love the work that you're doing out there i love the facebook group uh boy and it's going great congratulations on that um, and well, let's start. So I am Dr. Vanishri Belgamvar. Um, I have done my BAMS, that is the Bachelor's of Ayurvedic Medicine and Surgery. It's a five and a half degree program in India. And uh, we basically get a doctor's degree. So we get, uh, um, we are called doctors in India because we are allowed to practice Western medicine as well. So during our five and a half year program, we literally have rotations like how a Western medical doctor would. Like our uh, during our internships, we rotate through surgery, through pediatrics, through. So it's basically exactly a syllabus similar to Western medicine, and that's the best part about being a BMS doctor because you're learning both at the same time, which is a heck of a work. Work to do in like five and a half years but that that's what makes it better because now we know or we understand where to use what treatment or what fits the best in the in the given scenario so it's really really good to um, know the Western side of it as well. And that also helps us a lot in our Ayurvedic practice. So, which is great. Um, but it was, it was quite a lot of work that we did in five and a half years. Uh, and still, I'm still, honestly, I'm telling you, I'm still learning because this is a, this is a very, uh, it's a, I call Ayurveda a black hole. It never <laughs> ends. Yes. It's, it's literally a black hole. Like, uh, once you get into a topic, it's like, okay, I learned something new about it today. Or every client that sits in front of me, even even though I've been practicing Ayurveda for about nine years now, every client that still sits in front of me would teach me something new. Like, even though it's like a little, little bit of something, but every client, it's like a, every consult is a learning process and I'm still growing and growing, but it's amazing. So, let me tell you a little bit about my journey and how I came to Ayurveda, which is a little interesting. Uh, and, how, and how out of all the places I landed in Minnesota, <laughs> which is like, which is crazy for me when I like walk myself through my past. It's like, how did this even happen? Um, so uh, basically I, I'm born in India. I've done my education in India. And um, my mom is a pediatrician. So she was she used to practice as a pediatrician in India. And um, she said, uh, because she used to practice with a little, a lot of little kids, she never wanted to administer pharmaceuticals because you know, as children, it's still very harsh on their kidneys, on their liver. So she always uh, ventured out for like naturopathy or homeopathy or some, some Ayurvedic no herbal treatments. So um, when my time came to choose a career, you know, your parents sit you down, they talk to you, and then they're like, okay, tell us what do you want to do with your future? I was like another high school kid, not knowing where am I supposed to go, right? So my mom and dad, I've been brought up in an entrepreneur family because like my mom and dad both have like about like 10 businesses up till now together. So they're, they, they change businesses, like they change clothes. Uh, but because that ent entrepreneurial gene was always in me, um, they, they are very like, you know, like very, um, what do you say? Like they have a great vision of what would be the future. And um, my mom just sat me down. She said, okay, if you're like clueless, can we help you in, in the guidance? So. She said she introduced me to this this sect of medical or this world of medicine called Ayurveda, and once I started reading about it, I was very fascinated by it. But more than being fascinated, something inside me told me, like you you might say the inner voice or the intuition told me that go this way. And I tell my clients this as well, listen to your intuition. This is very, very important because your intuition is 99.99% .99 of the times correct, unless it's a craving or a want, right? <laughs> so it's very important to differentiate between them. Uh, but my intuition told me that you need to go this route. So as a high school kid, I started researching, I started, uh, 
doing or taking all the courses that was needed to get into an Ayurvedic college. I took Sanskrit because all our texts are written in Sanskrit. So I, I learned Sanskrit in my high school. And then I went to, I jumped into this world of Ayurveda. Now I remember on the first day of my college, um, like when you introduce yourself, uh, all your professors are sitting in front of you and my principals uh, asks to, asks everyone to stand up and introduce yourself and why, why have you come to Ayurveda. Now in India, the sad part is if you do not get, get into a Western medical college is when you would opt for uh, an Ayurvedic degree because then you're still an Ayurvedic doctor, right? <laughs> so you still get a doctor's degree and you're allowed to practice Western medicine. But I was not a person like that. And I and I remember in my class, class there were only three students who came to Ayurveda just for the sake of it. I mean, just for, not sake of it, just for learning Ayurveda, like genuinely learning Ayurveda. So I stood up and I was like, I don't know why even I said that at that time. I don't even know wh why it came out of my mouth. But I said, hi, I'm Vanashri Balgamvar and I want to globalize Ayurveda. I want people from all over the world to learn about this amazing science so that people from all over the world can be benefited by it. So uh, at that time I just said it and then life happened, I learned uh, I went through my college years and slowly I just forgot like whatever my goal my aim was it just like took a back seat and I was like okay uh, I passed out I started working for a company uh, I used to and then I used to do pulse diagnosis for them where I used to hold pulse diagnosis camps all over India um, and I used to literally like check 70 to 100 patients every single day. And these camps used to la last for three to five days. So I used to, the camps used to host about like 1200 to 1500 people. And uh, there would be, yeah, I would be checking clients throughout the day with just a little bit of lunch break, but it was exhausting. But that helped me a lot to grow as a practitioner. Um, yeah, and then, you know, in India, we get married <laughs> as soon as uh, we are done with our degree or our uh, education. And then people start asking, when is she going to get married? What is what is her uh, what, what are her plans for future? Has she even found someone? So um, in India, arranged marriages are quite common. So we were, um, my mom and dad started looking for a groom for me. And um, I, this guy comes in front of me, my husband, obviously. Uh, and I was like, everything was set. Like in India, I had like a 3000 square foot clinic. I was going to start practicing. I was like, after I was done with this job that I was working on, I was going to start practicing. And all of a sudden, I never wanted to leave India because everything was set for me. Like my entire life was set there. And this person comes in front of me, he stands up, he's like, hey, I'm Bhushan. And I'm like, oh my God, he's the person. <laughs> and I don't know what happened. Like everything changed. Then at that moment, it didn't matter whether he is from the United States or he is what he is or what I have here, what am I going to do in the future? Nothing mattered, like honestly. And I, I just got married to this person because my I just listened to my intuition. I said, this is the right way. Then even after coming to United States, I had to struggle a bit with my work visa. I couldn't get my visa. So during that time, I still, yeah, I still work with one of my colleagues um, to see how they practice Ayurveda here. I used to sit in with her. I used to learn um, and do a lot of stuff. So I used to help her. She used to help me. And it was a, like a good collaboration. And then in 2016, I got my work visa is when I started practicing Ayurveda. No, 2015. I'm sorry. 2015 is when I got my work visa. And then I, I started my own practice. Since then, it's going great. But, you know, now when I look back at my life, is like one day I was just sitting in my office working on something and I was like, heck, I was meant to do this. Like, this is what I had asked the universe for, you know? And I would sort of forgotten. And most of the times that happens, like you ask for something and you just forget it, but universe knows it. And the universe will make 
or make the things fall in the right place. And it will I happen think that, for and that is so important because when you do acknowledge yeah. it, uh -huh. like then things can grow. Exactly. Yeah. But when you just are like, oh, that's weird. Like no, that's no. not, no, you need to honor Like, I love that you said, no, yeah. I paused and I was like, oh, it's happening or it happened or, oh my God, you know, because that's so important. And I love it because yes. this group is about engaging with your intuition. So Absolutely. tell us more yeah. about <laughs> just to keep including so, intuition. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So when, like now, when I look at myself, where I am at, where my practice is flourishing i'm helping so many clients figure out their own bodies their health their mind and it's it's really this awakening when you it's such a blissful moment when you understand the purpose of your life it's like when why are you on this planet what is the reason the soul is in this body and what is it meant to do this purpose of life when you when it dawns on you it's like an awakening a self-realization that that is amazing. I mean, your consciousness grows and you want to help more people and you want to you want to do as much as you can for this amazing science and help people through it. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love I'm so passionate about Ayurveda and it's it's like the for, I usually say I love more. I love Ayurveda more than my son or my husband because it's my first love. It's literally my first love. So, yeah, absolutely. So this is where I'm I'm at currently, and this is how my life journey was, and was quite quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. So can you just tell us, like, <clears throat> give us a little bit about like what is Ayurveda, and you know why would somebody maybe be interested in looking to it versus like their regular doctor? You know, again, you have a, a really good idea of that, not just because you've been practicing for a while, but you grew up right. with somebody who looked at things very holistically, even mm -hmm. though they were a regular kind of, we call it Western or allopathic mm -hmm. practitioner. Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, first of all, I would like to put into simple words, Ayurveda is another way of, of holistic medicine. Basically, it's like similar to homeopathy. I would say similar, not exactly the same, but, but holistic medicine is pretty much similar. They work more with energies um, and on a completely different plane. It's not only physical, it's like a a, a holistic approach, right? It's your mind, your body, your spirit, your emotions, your psych. Everything comes into picture when we're looking at this being sitting in front of us. So this is what Ayurveda is. This is exactly what Ayurveda is, but we work with a lot of qualities of things or the elements with which you were with which you are formed. So Ayurveda basically says everything in the universe, including us, are made of five elements. That is fire, water, air, earth, and ether. Now these five elements make up everything outside us, like the nature outside us, but we are also a smaller representation of the nature outside us. That means whatever is happening in the nature is on a subtle level happening in our bodies too. So understanding the, this subtlety or these, these subtle qualities helps us keep them in balance and helps us be in harmony or live in harmony with nature a lot more. So this is what Ayurveda is, knowing what personality you are or what constitution you have and following the right diet and lifestyle for your constitution will help you prevent diseases. So I would say Ayurveda is more like a preventative um, approach towards health. So Ayurveda tells a lot about what to do to avoid diseases. Now, if you're not aware about these things and you end up having a disease or you end up having a symptom, Ayurveda has a lot of information on that too. But the best part about the word Ayurveda itself means that science of life. So Ayu means life and Veda means science. So when you club them together, it basically is teaching you how to live a healthy, balanced life. It's not only the curative aspect of it. So this is where 
I would say a lot of my clients come to me, even though when they are healthy, but they just want to know that what type of constitution they have so that they can follow the right diet uh, and avoid diseases. Like the other day, one client came to me, she just said her, her acupuncture therapist told her that she has lymph congestion, even though she didn't have any symptoms whatsoever. She just came to me and she said that my acupuncture uh, therapist told me that I need to go to an Ayurvedic practitioner to get this checked out. So I was like, I was, I was really amazed to see the interest growing in the community about being living a holistic way because it's very, very important. And this awareness is still not out there is what I feel. It's growing. It's definitely growing, but it needs to grow a lot more. And people need to understand that it's important. Like these things are very important in life. Can mm -hmm. Can you, so the thing that I find to be so unbelievably fascinating is Ayurveda is thousands of years old. Oh, yes. And so here's the thing that like when you talk about, you know, it is the science of life and that it is, it's a very holistic, balanced approach, right? The thing that I find to be one of the absolute coolest things is that if this is thousands of years old mm -hmm. and they had the tools to help you pathologically yeah how did they and i know but i want you to tell them tell everybody listening how yeah. did they know all of this stuff Vanishri? how did they get yeah. to know the doshas how did they get to know oh, the yeah. elements how did they figure this out help yeah. tell them tell them this is very interesting so our ancient texts are written about well, Ayurveda is more than 6,000 years old, but they started documenting things about 3,000 years ago, okay? So it's like a very ancient science, uh, but they started like actually writing things down and documenting in like Sanskrit texts about 3,000 years ago. So um, all the basically let's start with Sushruta. So Sushruta is one of our uh, ancient teachers or our gurus in Ayurveda that have written text on surgery. So he was the first surgeon ever to, um, and literally they have also, like in our text, they have told us how, how to use herbs to uh, preserve a body, you know, for dissection. And it's amazing when they knew this 3000 years ago. But the best part about this is, all the gurus were meditators and they never needed any they were absolutely they were and all the gurus were meditators and they just literally used to close their eyes go deep within and figure out what's going on like literally brilliant right just amazing Amazing. Like this is how they figured it out and it yeah. lines up and it lines up with Western medicine and like what the they, people fig figured out by actually Not dissecting amazing. the body. Not I'm amazing. just, it's too exciting. No, not to amazing. get excited about it. Yeah, it's amazing. And like how Charaka was another one of our un other uh, gurus that we followed or our teachers. Charaka knew everything about like everything about everything, like about the body, about the nature. Uh, but literally he used to touch a tree like he used to touch the tree and he used to feel what diseases this tree might cure. And isn't that amazing? Because, because Ayurveda says there is life force energy within every single thing out there. You just have to tap into that energy and feel it, just observe it within you. All the answers the universe has put in you, they are already in you. You just have to go deep within and just tap into that energy and expand it. The more expansion of this consciousness happens, you're connected deeper to the things outside you and that's when this awareness or this knowledge comes to you you know and pulse is also another uh, amazing diagnostic method we do the same thing we just go deeper into the consciousness of the person in front of us and try to dive deep within that being that prana and try to see where it's getting blocked what organs are uh, hurting by it and things like that. So yeah, I mean, all of our ancient gurus were meditators and very, very deep meditators. They used to just meditate and like even like first Sushruta used to like meditate, see all the layers of the muscles and then he used to dissect it to check if that's right or wrong. And it's amazing. I mean, every single time his, uh, his conclusion used to be right like every single time. And it's amazing how much your 
uh, even astrology, right? Even Vedic astrology, like old astrologers used to just close their eyes and they used to go to that planet, like literally, because Ayurveda says your mind is, there is a very um, specific quality of mind called sukshma that is subtle. Your mind is so subtle that it can go to anywhere, everywhere, anytime at once. Like sitting here right now, I can be in Alps, right? If I close my eyes, if I want to be in Switzerland, I can literally be in Switzerland right, right now if I want to be. So that's that's how fast your mind is and how subtle it is. So if you use this subtle quality of your mind, your awareness can literally expand. Your consciousness can expand and you can connect. You can, and nature is so complicated. You cannot understand it. You cannot understand it, but at least, <laughs> but at least like, understanding some part of it which can which we can ben benefit by is very very important so the first thing i usually recommend everyone is to meditate whether it be like five minutes ten minutes how much ever you want to but a meditation practice is very very important yeah yeah i think one of the biggest things that's like my like mantra or for my business and when i talk about it it's just like simple if we can yeah. keep it simple then it's yeah. actually doable. Yes. And, you know, and when you think about this idea of, and, you know, one of the reasons when I started this group and I put intuition in the name mm -hmm. and it's all about energy for me, right? Yeah. Because this is what we're talking, we really are talking about energy. Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. the idea that energetically speaking, we can change things from moment to moment. Yes. And that we just, because of either how we're eating or how we're allowing ourselves to be, um, you know, the heaviness of things and how we're allowing it to just t have its way with us is what I say, yeah. you know, yeah. and the, the fact that in a moment, like you said, you could close your eyes and feel like I'm in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Like you literally, like, what if you just, and I say this a lot too, suspend belief and just realize like you're there, yes. you know, yeah. and right. So it's like on a health level, mm -hmm. like if you can just allow yourself yeah. to go there, yeah. And just see, feel the energy shift, regardless of whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, two oh, minutes, yeah. that you just allow it to happen. It's such, it's such a gift to yourself, as long as you believe it to be true. Correct. Right? Correct. Because otherwise, we just get sort of swept away in our oh, vata yeah. mind. And it's oh, like, yeah. oh, nothing's ever going to change for me, or yep. I'm always going to be like this, or, yep. but what if, what if you could just be as still as a tree Oh, yeah. And be, you know, surrounded by all that. Yeah. So I just, I love that because in, I think a lot of people have a hard time connecting to their intuition yes. and they think of it sort of as this magical, mystical thing, even though they know they kind of get like, it was my gut, like my gut it's told me to do this or that. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, it really is that simple. Like if, uh, if this person who, even though I'm sure like the, the level of meditating you know, so beyond us, but like, even if you could just trust the answers that come. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the simple beginnings, right? right. I right. love this. I love this. So can you, so can you tell us, I mean, I think most people, when they think of Ayurveda, they might've heard of the doshas, right? They've heard you, the, you know, the elements we've heard about the elements with Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. Can you just introduce us a little bit to the Yes. three doshas. Yes, absolutely. So as I was saying earlier, we are made of five elements, right? Now Ayurveda says there are these three functional principles or like you could, you can call it like subtle energies that work in your body in different places during different times of the day, but there are three, okay? They're called doshas. They're functional principles and it's like a tripod. There are three because it's like a tripod on which your health stands. Now, if this tripod is imbalanced, it's going to fall, like the health is going to fall down or fall back. And that's what we don't want. So we want to keep a right balance of these doshas in your body. And Ayurveda also says that these doshas are formed with two elements each, okay? So vata, Pitta and Kapha are the three doshas. Vata is made of air and ether element. Pitta is made of fire and water element. And Kapha is made of water and earth element. Okay, now we work with a lot of qualities of these elements. Okay, now how would be air? Uh, how, what would be, the, would be the qualities of air? So air is like, it's light to weigh, right? It's 
it's mobile it's always moving air is never never stationary right uh, it's dry it's rough it's cold right so all of these qualities when you look at the space element or air element is what you would resonate with more right so if a person naturally has these elements more in their system is when they would be called a vata dosha person or that means they have a lot more vata in their uh, system. So how would you classify, or if you look at a quality of a Vata person, then they would have like dry skin, dry hair, more prone to constipation, dry internals. They're very, very light to weight, usually tall, skinny people. They do not put, put on weight very easily. Even if they do put on weight, they lose weight very quickly. So traits like that. Um, they're always all over the place, very spacey, <laughs> very active beings, cannot sit in one place type of beings. So this is what we look at when we look at a person. Like say for instance, is this a Vata person? Is this a Pitta person? Or is this a Kapha person? Now Ayurveda also says that you're, you are born with a certain type of constitution and that's called Prakriti in Ayurveda, okay? And this Prakriti never changes. It, it is who you, so you are who you are for this lifetime. It's sort of like your DNA or your blood group, which never changes, right? So it's like that. So you're born with a set of doshas or a specific balance of doshas. And this balance could be depending on various different factors. It could be what season you were born in, what did your mother eat when you were pregnant? What, um, so what is your, what is the property of your dad, your mom? Uh, so there are various different factors that could uh, matter in what constitution you get for this life. But unfortunately, it cannot be changed. So what is in our hands is to manage those, that balance of doshas in the right way so that it doesn't convert into an imbalance and cause problems. Okay, it's as simple as that. So say, for instance, we took an example of a Vata person. Now, if a Vata person is more prone to having qualities like dry, rough, light, airy, right? A Vata person should be doing things opposite of those qualities to balance those qualities out. So that means Ayurveda works on the principle like increases like and opposites balance. It's a very universal principle, very, very easy. If I take water in a cup and add more water to it, it's going to increase. If I take air in a cup, add more air to it, it's going to increase, right? It's exactly the same way in our body. If you eat the food or do life or follow a lifestyle similar to the qualities that you are made of, those qualities are going to keep increasing in you. So say for instance, a Vata person cannot sit still. So meditation is like a punishment. It's literally like a, a punishment for a Vata person because their mind is always all over the place, very erratic people. Um, sitting still is opposite of mobility, right? So usually just changing it a bit and making it into a guided meditation can sometimes help a lot for a Vata person because then their active mind is engaged, their chattering mind is engaged somewhere and they can dive deeper within their consciousness. So making these little changes and understanding what type you're made of helps a lot to figure out what would be the right diet. So when it comes to diet, say for instance, now people, people think they're eating healthy, <laughs> but healthy does not necessarily mean healthy for you is what Ayurveda says. Now say for instance, if a Vata person is eating salads every single day, it's gonna cause a lot of problems <laughs> because salads are raw, they're cold, they're light, they're dry, they're rough, they're crunchy, right? So yeah. they're exactly, <laughs> exactly the same way that a Vata person is made of. Now, if a Vata person eats salads a lot more, they're gonna have a lot of bloating, a lot of constipation, a lot of erratic bowel movements, right? So yeah. it's very important for a Vata person to understand the, these qualities qualities or not just about the person but everyone to understand these qualities and try to balance them out with the right quality food ayurveda says nothing is healthy or unhealthy moderation is the rule okay moderation is a rule if you're a healthy balanced individual but eating the same quality food every day will aggravate a set of qualities in you and this is what we need to understand this is what we need to be more aware of 
and see why we are doing things the way we are doing it. So that yeah. mindfulness should be awakened, should be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, <clears throat> it's interesting because when you look at at least the U.S., right? I can't speak to India, but yeah. <laughs> in the U.S., a lot of us uh, have that all or nothing like yep. steeped into right. us, regardless of whether we're pizza or not. Like we have the all or nothing really steeped in. So like when people were like fat-free foods, everybody was eating fat-free foods, even yep. though, and then the people who weren't were like, what the, like, what, what you're what eating full fat yogurt? Like, who are you? That's terrible yeah. for you. Right. Yeah. Like, or when it was soy, everybody was like, well, let's everybody eat soy and like, not just eat soy as a condiment, like you would in Asia. Like it's yeah. a, like a couple times a week. And it's like, it's almost like a condiment. I used to live there. That's how it was, you know, but here it was like, let's have soy milk upon yeah. soy yogurt upon some tofu with, you know, so it's like, we always kind of overdo it. And so I think that generally speaking, most people, People, and don't get me wrong, I do love a good salad, yes. right? Yes, but, but like we think we have this idea of what healthy food means. Yes. And instead of listening to ourselves and how our bodies react, right. we let somebody else be the knower and the doer. And so we just take right. what they say. And then we were like, I don't know. I mean, I'm eating all the salads. I don't know why I'm not losing weight or whatever it is. Right. And it's just, it comes back to that idea. Like the, another reason why I really enjoy pulling Ayurveda in from, you know, as being a health coach. Right. And then also the other things I did do, but just allowing people to take into account more, how are you physically feeling when you eat these foods versus how have you been programmed to believe exactly. what is healthy? Exactly. Right. I feel like, and even sometimes with, with, Ayurveda, like we can still get in a dogma. We like to, we like somebody else to tell us the rules versus allowing ourselves to really be steeped in how do we feel? Yeah. Because the more we trust ourselves, the more maybe my specific individual constitution really loves barley. Yeah. And it, it and let's say it thrives on barley versus yeah. rice. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't even know that because I'm, I try to be carb free or something, right. you know, because everybody told me because I I'm heavier, I need to avoid all carbs. Right. right. So I really, I, I love this idea when it comes to Ayurveda is that you need to be in touch and in tune with how are you feeling? And that does mean you need to slow down and you need to reflect and you need yeah. to consider, <laughs> which are all the things that you know, d depending on the dosha, right? If we're vata, it's like, I can't slow down to think about it anyway, because I'm on hi hi hyperdrive and it's kapha is just like, <laughs> oh, you know, like it's just too much for me to even consider. And, and then Pitta's like, well, I got to eat at these times and this is how, you know, <laughs> so yeah. So I really, I really appreciate that. So um, what else would you say just kind of at a global Ayurveda um, statement, like, what would you say people should know about Ayurveda if they were thinking about trying it? Like, what's something maybe if you're looking online on the internet, if you are seeing some posts here and there about Ayurveda, like, what do you think is maybe either a misconception they might think when they look at these posts uh -huh. and then d like choose not to like explore Ayurveda? Or what's a misconception that, oh, I have to always kind of, once they think they know Ayurveda, this is something I'm usually you know, is there anything like that that you think you could share or something else that like a tidbit that might be helpful? Yeah, absolutely. So what I mean, Ayurveda in the West is yet growing is what I feel. And people Ayurveda is a vast, as I said, it's the science of life, right? But what is happening is people are breaking it apart and taking their own sections and working on them, which is not bad, which is not bad. But then you're not able to see the whole picture, right? Now, a lot of people come to me, if I ask them, do you know about Ayurveda? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know Aveda. But Aveda is not Ayurveda, right? <laughs> Aveda is just a teeny tiny bit of like just a scratch on the surface of Ayurvedic herbs for beauty, 
right? Or for, for, <laughs> for external purposes. But it, that is not what Ayurveda is. Ayurveda is way beyond that. Ayurveda is a way of living, of understanding yourself, of under, going deeper within yourself and understanding what is good for you, what is not, what might be the right fit for you. So what is happening right now is probably people see all these posts out there. I also saw recently there was like a, it's very popular these days. It's a, a beauty product of Ayurveda. I think it's like an oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The three drops. I, I don't know what, what oil it is, but uh, and I, I'm, I'm hearing that it's, it's working wonders and it's great. I'm not saying it's wrong, but that is not what Ayurveda is. Ayurveda is way beyond that. And then what happens is posts like this sort of like compartmentalize Ayurveda, which is, which is may not necessarily be the right thing. So I would say, look at the broader picture when you're looking at Ayurveda, try to dig deeper into it if you see any posts and try to go to like, a, because unfortunately there are no set practice rules or like no, uh, what do you say? Like, uh, what is it called? Like uh, degrees or practice, um, what is it called? Like the no, uh, annotation. are you talking about like board testing or specialties or yeah, like specialties in the U S like, uh, the set rules of who is knowledgeable in Ayurveda. Oh, is yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, because people like do a weekend Ayurvedic course and then they call themselves an Ayurvedic practitioner where we have worked like super duper hard <laughs> for five and a half to six years studying this science and you just cannot call yeah yourself an Ayurvedic practitioner yeah I mean th that just doesn't make sense so what I would suggest is when you go to an Ayurvedic practitioner first check everything out about that practitioner where have they gotten their degrees mm -hmm. how, ma how many years have they really learned how many their years ha they have been practicing how what is their um yeah approach towards their practice. So this matters a lot when you choose a practitioner and not only the practitioner, but learning Ayurveda from an authentic source is going to matter a lot because it's not, it's not an easy science. It's, this is like, whatever I said is very basic. Like it's a, like I would consider an atom of Ayurveda, just like a teeny tiny bit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, as I said, it's a black hole. It's like the, <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think when we hopped on this call, Vanishri laughed at me because I had told her, I was like, you know, I just want to make sure that people like my, my people here in yeah. this group are getting exposed to the best of the best. And I'm like really picky. And she's like, oh, that's your pitta. And I'm like, well, yeah, because I, even though I am not at the level that you are at, mm -hmm. I know, I know good stuff, right. you know? And so I know where I lack and where I want people to be able to go. And I know, and I, when I search and I research and I and explore something, uh -huh. because that's what I do. Yes. Like I know how to find people who really know their stuff. Right. Yeah. right. And we do, and we know like, guys, there is, there is an organization in this country. It's called NAMA. They're mm -hmm. trying to create like these levels, that. yep, these levels of understanding. So, you know, if you see an Ayurvedic specialist or counselor, yeah. this is what this means. If you see an Ayurvedic practitioner, this is what this means. Dr. Vanashri, like she doesn't, again, because this is a holistic medicine, she has added to her um, repertoire or, you know, she's offering the actual like other modalities, which is panchakarma yeah. and these other physical body treatments. Like there's amazing things for the whole body and massages. And it, it's a huge, wonderful, beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And so, but there are some people who just specialize in that, which is great. If like you yeah. want to just go and go and have, you know, a specific kind of massage that is a detoxifying massage or really grounding nourishing massage you know so there's lots of uh, lots of things out there so what um i posted your website right uh -huh. on, under this link right now the only comment we have is this is amazing and your passion is amazing so we don't have anything but <laughs> any specific questions because i think 
I think this is, like you said, we're scratching the surface of understanding what is Ayurveda and, and why explore it. And I know you said that you have some things that you're working on right now. Yes, yeah, so I'm like super duper excited about this project <laughs> that I'm doing. Uh, it's, it's yet not completely uh, done. Uh, so I would be launching it in about a month or so out here. But it's going to be, I'm just going to give you a teeny tiny bit of a trailer of what's <laughs> coming. <laughs> I don't want to spill my secrets, you know. So um, basically, it's going to be based on Ayurvedic meals. And it's going to be super awesome. Um, and if you want to know more about what's coming, uh, just subscribe to my website or you can certainly shoot me uh, a message on my Facebook page that, hey, I'm, I'm, uh, I want to be on your mailing list or I want to subscribe to your mailing list. And just you can join my Facebook page because I, and my Insta, uh, my Instagram profile. Uh, and you would soon hear about what's coming out there and it's going to be a very cool project so look out for it and try to um, join the Ayurvedic community and explore more because it might be the right fit for you awesome yeah. well we might have like a part two coming up in yeah. you know a couple months or something like that but we'll see uh thank you so much for coming on here with me and i know you're in our group right now and oh it looks like we have a new comment hold on uh hold no regulations on who practice yeah so we have a comment that says there's no regulation on who practices I'm yeah. saying it with big wide eyes. Yeah. yeah, because no, like it doesn't have that. We don't have like a board of Ayurveda people yet. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so that's why when you're looking for somebody, as Vanishri said, you want to make sure that you've kind of vetted them for yourself. Like I yeah. said, I am vetting someone right here for you. Um, I have experience with Ayurveda. I love to talk about Ayurveda, but if you want to really dive into Ayurveda, I recommend Vanashri. And yeah. we we are also part of an organization in Minnesota. It's called MA, the Minnesota Ayurveda o Association. You can check out that website and check out other people, but this is, you know, I'm, I'm introducing you to somebody that I truly respect um, and that knows her stuff yeah. and, um, and is very Ayurveda focused, right? Oh. I, I'm focused on what's the simplest way to get, you know, the results that you're looking for. And, and Vanashri is focused on using Ayurveda as, yeah. the, as a holistic healing modality. So I like to pick and choose and pull. Mm -hmm. And Vanashri uses, you know, this, this vast yeah. knowledge that she has that is a black hole that she continues to learn from because that is her her methodology for giving you the best she can in holistic healing right yeah. Yeah. so yeah so yay um i don't think we have any other questions as of yet but in the group they might i ask them to if they have questions to hashtag replay and put the questions in there and hopefully you will see them. Um, yes, Dr. Von is in our group now. I don't, yes. you know, so, uh, yeah. So thank you so much for coming on well, and, so um, for hosting me. It's really an honor. Um, yeah, this is an amazing group and I'm glad I'm a part of it. Um, this is what exactly I do. I'm very mindful. I, I, I listen to my intuition. This is what, and intuition means everything to me, literally yeah. everything to me. It's it's okay. my my foundation of my life. So it's very, very important that everyone tries to tap in that energy and yeah, grow. Yeah, it's very important. Well, it was great. This was <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you next Tuesday, guys. Bye.